I think it's somewhere around here. Oh fuck, there it is. Let's see what they've left for us, man. Uh, I think people find some pretty good uh, trophies. Yeah. Um, oh. oh, did they leave us something? Yeah, they left us. Oh, cool. It's a, it's a KTM, but it's also not a KTM. Yeah. Close enough. I mean, you can't be too picky with the things you find in sheds and the woods, you know? Yeah. Alright, so what do we got here? Uh, hold on, gotta do the intro. Hey everyone, Duke Nuka 3D here with another mask in his collection. And today we have for you a MSA Burel Cops type, but a very peculiar configuration of a Cops type because what we have here is the ever elusive t law enforcement configuration with the Type G filter. Now, can you give us a little hit background on the Cops type, uh, Moulage? Oh hell, you mean for, uh, uh, yeah, okay. So in industrial stuff, uh, the Bureau Cops type uh, was sold by MSA. Uh, it was actually uh, rebranded by several companies, including Pulmasan, which this one is. This is a later model or a later version. You can tell from the stock netless hose. Yeah, it's, I like to call it the transitional version. Yeah, but uh, one of the main things here is uh, these were not actually, these are not military face pieces. These are industrially produced. We don't actually have any real KTMs. Uh, but these are called Burel, Bure, Burel, Burel Cops types I, because they're based off the KTM. Well, yeah, but also I was going to say that uh, George Arthur Burel, as you guys probably know from Duke's other videos, was a uh, uh, colonel. I yeah, think. a colonel. Yeah, yeah, colonel in the Chemical Warfare Service. And... Uh, MSA just pull, uh, MSA made, grabbed him and said, "Hey, your name's gonna be on masks and shit." And he was like, "Okay, that's fucking cash." And so they, uh, they made at least three face pieces with his name on them. More if you want to get more technical. But uh, you have this, and then you have the stock and atlas one that has the uh, Yablik valve. That's also a Burel cop yes, type. But, and you have the Burel diaphragm. But what we're talking about tonight is this particular canister because it's been somewhat of a mystery and a lot of myths and questions about it have arisen and we're here to try and dispel some of that through some of our studies. So this is what is more commonly known as the Type G filter, which was originally made by MSA. And they were this one is one of the more common ones you'll see, which are rebranded by Lake Erie Chemical Company. As it says there across the bottom, uh, we've had a friend who actually somehow decided to take this label off and under it was an MSA label. This one, I don't think there's a label under it. Also, these are like wicked fucking rare, so we're not going to take it apart. Yes. And as you can see, it's designed so that it fits all the way inside of a standard M1 chest carrier. And this, these fillet canisters were almost certainly uh, predominantly marketed towards law enforcement because all photographic evidence of, we see, of these canisters in use have been with law enforcement and... Uh, really no other evidence aside from that. We know that a lot of... Uh, I haven't seen these canisters in any other configuration. Um, the only it, also, it also says on here it's not good against chemical warfare agents, which basically knocks any military use out of the question. Yes, and a lot of people have uh, erroneously credited this as a military canister because, oh, this the face piece is with a M1 chest carrier, so that might, must mean it is a military KTM. When it is not, these are, in fact, law enforcement canisters. Uh, so that being the case... There's not really too much to analyze here. There's a big mystery as to why, where these were developed and how they were used, who they were used by, and how long they were in service, or in production, rather, because um, you see these on a lot of various uh, uh, Burel masks. Like, you see them more commonly on, like, normal stock and edited cops types, but I have actually seen them on Burel diaphragms as well for a brief period, but... They seem to have died down by the late 30s as law enforcement was no longer interested in hosed-type masks. And that really pretty much sums um, it up. Do you yeah. have anything else Otherwise, to add? there's some technical details to analyze with it. Obviously, it's it's an attempt at improving over World War One filters. The really key thing to notice is obviously World War One style inhale, but then you also have these nice lugs that allow air to get in through it. Yeah, so that the carrier does not require a spring, if you can hopefully see that, which you probably can't, but there is no spring in the canister. I believe the with this bag also... Yes, now what you guys really can't see, it's a little bit hard, so I'll explain from the outside. Here's this partition down here. Mask goes here, filter goes here. There are two open grommets. Hold at on, the I'm checking the time here. Um, we have enough time. We have four okay. minutes. Okay. 
So there's two holes here, and those allow air to come into this side of it because you know you can't put holes here for some reason. I don't know why curses or something. Yeah. So you have to put them here and have the air go down. Anyway, air comes in here, air goes through those. We don't have the spring anymore, and it works better. Larger filter, theoretically a longer life, but you're only using it for tear gas, so yeah. yeah and that's pretty much the gist of it as well. Um, really the only other things to analyze about the Bureau Cops type is just in regards to the face piece. The only differences between, um, we've already sort of touched base on the differences between the Cops type and the KTM, but the main one is to look out for chromed eyepieces or zinc plated, tin plated, I don't know what the heck this is, but these silver eyepieces, that is indicative of a Bureau Cops type. And then also, the interior, there are Tissot deflectors, much like an AT. And in fact, we have actually proven that a lot of the early production Cops types use um, original wartime AT deflectors that they Isn't simply trim. Stock in it? Yeah, this no, that, that, no, that's a later one. Yeah, that's but a, you'll see on some of them they'll actually have a strip of stockinette here, and that's where when they were on the ATs they were originally glued into the face piece. Now they didn't do that with these, but two of the uh, 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 cops types in my collection do have that. Yeah, and I'm sure the Duke will probably. Uh, show that off at a yeah, later point. Show, do a video or take photos or something. And the only other thing to analyze about the differences is that the original wartime KTMs will may, be made out of a red-brown gum rubber as opposed to this MSA black. The fabric patches for the harness webbing is going to be sort of a more trapezoidal shape than these uh, lozenge-shaped ones. And then that's really it. It's not nothing else different uh, aside from that. And then maybe the uh, flutter valve guard will have a cross guard on it. Most of the time, the barrel cop types do not, as you can probably see. But other than that, essentially the same idea, same, uh, same principles and all that. So if you have one of these, it's not a KTM, it's a bureau cops type, unless it has red gum rubber and all that shit he just mentioned. Uh, let me check the time. I'm blinding you now. Oh, fuck. Uh, we should probably wrap it up. It's, it's only been seven minutes, actually. We got a lot of time, actually. Okay. Are you going to cut those out? Cut the... Uh, probably not. It adds to the effect of it. Fair enough. Ugh, fuck. Yeah, you're only allowed to stay in the mystery shed for like, what, 15 minutes? Yeah, before it shows up. Yes, yeah. I'm just being wary of our time they here. They call it the mumbler. The mumbler. Yes, let's get this fucking thing packed up and head out of here. Yeah. Remember, guys, anything you find in the shed is tax deductible. Well, like, wrap tax deductible. Well, I don't pay taxes, except for wrap taxes. Yeah, let's get this dirt off of here. Oh, don't worry about it. We'll shake it off. Come on. Get it out. Oh boy, we're gonna have to hose that off. Yeah, it's called an apron for a reason. I don't know why they call it an apron, but like, it's an apron, you know? Fuck. I think that's everything. Yep. Let's get the fuck out of here.